look closely at this image. Titled View from the Window at Le Gras, it is widely considered to be the oldest surviving photograph taken almost 200 years ago in 1827 by Joseph Niepce, a French inventor. To create the image, Niepce used a camera obscura to project the view from his second story window onto a chemically treated pewter plate. It was a slow process and the exposure time would have taken around eight hours. Here's the same image, but enhanced and colorized. Perhaps now you can see a bit more. Rooftops of buildings, the top of a tree, the sky above. As is often the case with invention, photography is based on many different ideas going back centuries, but primarily to create a photograph, two inventions were needed. First, the camera obscura, or pinhole camera, which passes light through a tiny hole projecting a reversed image onto a flat surface. Second, some kind of light sensitive material is needed, which would be exposed to the projected image. Camera obscuras had actually been around for centuries and various materials were known to chemically react to light exposure. So essentially, what Niepce did was bring these two elements together to create a lasting photograph. The word photography is derived from the Greek words photos, meaning light, and graphos, meaning drawing. So the word photography can be thought of as drawing or painting with light, which is exactly what Nieps was doing with his camera upstairs in the window of his house. He was using light to paint an image. While Nieps created the first crude photographs in the 1820s, it would be his associate, Louis Daguerre, who would perfect the photographic process. In 1839, Daguerre introduced the world to his invention, publishing a how-to guide for his daguerreotype process, as he called it. This daguerreotype photograph, titled View from the Boulevard du Temple, was made in 1839 and is already a big leap from the crude images of Niepce. Daguerre's process took minutes rather than hours to expose an image, allowing him to beautifully capture this mostly deserted street in the morning light of Paris. Still, Daguerreotype cameras were big and clunky, and the exposure process took long enough that only still objects could be accurately photographed. This explains why, in many older photographs, people or objects in motion often appear blurry. Before photography, the best way to capture a realistic image of a person was through portrait painting, a laborious and highly expensive process that was reserved for those with wealth and power. But the daguerreotype photograph was much cheaper and faster and, over time, common people could afford to have their likeness captured. Daguerreotypes were an instant commercial success and they led to a daguerreotype craze as people lined up for portraits outside newly established photography studios. This self-portrait of Daguerre himself was created in 1844. Most daguerreotype photos were small, just a few inches in size, and were kept in decorative frames as keepsakes and family mementos. As time went on, other types of photography were invented, among them tintype, ambrotype, and cabinet cards. To the modern eye, there is something a bit haunting about these early photos, a kind of surrealness. People typically didn't smile in early photographs, because of the longer exposure times, but also the fact that portrait photography took its cue from painting, which required a subject to sit still for many hours. To sit for a photographic portrait was, at the time, a pretty formal affair. In the 1800s, a person might only have a single photo taken of them in their entire life. These photographs were meant to be treasured. They were a way to create permanence.